Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn Then Code. As we always say is that practice makes a man perfect. Same goes with coding. We have to practice every day. We have to practice a lot of problems to be better at it. So as we learned about pretty algorithms in our last video of data structures and algorithm series, I thought that we have to practice some questions on it first before moving to the next algorithm. So without wasting any time, let's get started with some lead code problems that are related to pretty algorithms. So let's start with the easy question first. The question is on longest palindrome. The question says that you are given a string S which consists of lowercase and uppercase letters and you have to return the length of the longest palindrome that you can make from the given letters. You just have to return the length. You don't have to return the exact palindrome. Now before moving forward with this question, we have to first understand about what is a palindrome. So a palindrome is a sequence that is read as same from backward as forward. For example, madam. Now madam is M-A-D-A-M, right? Now if I reverse this string, the string will always be M-A-D-A-M, right? Because uh, the backward sequence of characters and the forward sequence of characters is exactly same. So this is what a palindrome is. Now the question says that you are given uh, the list of lowercase and uppercase letters and you have to find that what is the longest combination, what is the length of the longest combination of palindrome you can create from the given input. For example, let's say this is the given input. Now you have to find that what is the longest palindrome the length of the longest palindrome you can create with this input. Now, if you can see in a palindrome, if you have two letters, two same letters, let, let's say it's, it's CC, then it is always a palindrome, right? Now, if you put a A in between and the string becomes C, A, C, it will still be a palindrome. Now, let's say you add two character, two same character at the end of the palindrome. Let's say D, C, A, C, D. It is a palindrome. So if you can observe for every even number of characters, even same number of characters, you can add them in pair in the front and in the end. And the resultant string will be a palindrome, right? For example, I can add E in the start of the already existing palindrome uh, string. And in the end also, I will add E. Now you can see this string is also a palindrome. So one thing I have observed, if I have a even a number of characters, even number of count of one character, then I can add it in my result string. But if I have odd number of count for any character, then what can be the possibilities? For example, let's say I have five count of D. Then what can I do? I can add D two times in the start. And let's say, here I have some palindrome and two in the end, two Ds in the end. Now the count was that I had was five. Now I have already used four Ds. Can I use one D that is still left to make the string the length bigger? So let's start writing our solution. It will be a very simple to implement. So first we have to count the occurrence of every letter. So for this, you can either maintain an array, a count array, or you can use map also. So I am using unordered map with key of a char and count as int. This will be my count map. And what I can do is for every character, I will increase the counter s of i and let's say plus plus. Now what we have to check is we have to check that how many pairs we have, right? So let's run a loop on our map. Auto i is equal to count dot begin to get the first iterator till if it is not equal to count dot end. Till then we have to do counter plus plus. For every element, we have to check if the count is even or odd. So if i dot second modulo 2 is equal equal to 0, that means 
the count we have is in even format. So in that case, we can add all the available occurrences of that particular character in our final resultant uh, palindrome because they are in pair. So we can add the uh, one in the end and one in the beginning. So this is, let's say, our final answer, int answer, initialize with zero. And in the answer, we can add it here. And if the count is odd, we can only add it once, right? So we can have a check that else, if we have already added it once, because we can have only one odd occurrence, we can add it only in the middle of our palindrome. So we can check if our answer is even. That means we have not added it uh, in a final uh, sequence and we have one occurrence which we can add it in the middle of our palindrome. And that's it. This is our solution. At the end, we have to return our answer. So let's see how it will run. So for the input of A, B, C, 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 and D, D, let's see what should be the answer. As you can see, the answer is 7, which is expected. As you can see, the answer is 7 here also, right? And uh, I have run the code uh, on lead code also, and the solution is accepted. Now let's move to the more complex problem, which is container with most bottom. So the question says that you are given an integer array height of length n. So you are given an array of size n and it depicts the height. There are n vertical lines drawn such that the two endpoints of the ith line are i and 0 and i and height of i. Find two lines that together with the x-axis form a container such that the container contains the most water. Return the maximum amount of water a container can store. So in simple words, you are given an array and the height index of the array correspond to the height of the line uh, that you can draw at that particular um, height index. Now you have to find the container which can contain the maximum water. Now in this problem, you have two, uh, two things to take care of. First is the height of the container and second is the width of the container because the complete area of the container depends upon the height and width together. So you have to take care of both the aspects. Now the brute force approach can be you will find the area of all the containers that you can make from the given array and find the maximum from all those areas, right? But the better approach will be, let's say this is your um, array which is given to you. And these are all the heights which is given to you in the form of array, right? And you have to find the maximum area of the container. Now, what you can do is you will start, you will use two pointer approach. You will start from these two pointers. You will say, okay, the area that I can maximum cover here is this much, right? I can cover this much area only. Otherwise, the water will flow from here. So this is the maximum area I can cover. The next maximum area, which will be greater than this one, will be if I can move either from this side or from this side, right? I will use a two pointer approach that that means I will either move this pointer closer to middle or either this pointer closer to middle. Now, what will be the better choice? Should I go with this one or should I go with this one? One thing to note here is the width difference is one only, right? I am moving one step ahead, ahead from both sides. So the only difference that can make an effect will be the height and the height is greater in this scenario. And why it happened? Because in my previous step, the, the lower height was this one. So I know that in the next step, the lower height will always be this one only. Because in this case also, this, this was the lower one. So in the next case, either the result will be this or even lower than this. So I should not consider a solution jahan par main is wali line ko, is wali height ko use kar rahi hongi. So I, what I will do is, I will use this pointer to move ahead more closer to the middle. 
So the next solution would be, I will consider this height and this height. And iske hisab se, this is the area which is maximum, right? Now again, what, uh, what I will do, iske case mein, ye wala jo mera height tha, wo zada tha, right? This height, ye wala jo mera height tha, wo zada tha, right? That means the solution can be even more agar mein yahaan se move kar jau. So the next time, I will choose between this and this. And the answer will be ye wala area. Same goes every time. Main ya karungi har baar jo mera lower end hoga, wahaan se apne pointer ko closer move karungi to the middle. And then I will check if the answer is greater than the already existing answer or not. If it is greater, then I will update my result. And if it is not, I will keep moving till I, I have the choice to move. Right? So this is the basic approach and iski jo time complexity ho jayegi, it will be linear only. Kyunki hum is array ko khali ek bari traverse karenge. And the logic is, agar hum ek bari solution ko traverse kar chuke hain, that the lower, the, the maximum area that I can cover with this lower height, ye agar mujhe pata hai, to is lower height ke corresponding jitne bhi areas honge, unhe mujhe cover karne ki zarurat nahi hai. For example, if I know ke this is the area that I can get most out of it, right? To is se jo chhote wala area hoga, wo to mere solution ka part bani nahi sakta. Because I already know ki iska maximum area what I can achieve. So this is the greedy approach we are doing. We are greedily removing all those solutions jinka hume already pata hai ki wo solution mein kahi stand nahi karte that cannot be a possible solution so this is the greedy approach and ise execute karne ka kafi simple tarika hai let's try to code it now but before moving to the solution i would like to inform all of you that the uh, full stack development course provided by newton school is live so you can check out the link that is available in the description it's a very good course they will provide you a very good support to learn full stack development and also will help you to get placement from all those opportunities. So please check out the link which is available in the description and it will definitely help you. So now let's move to the solution of this question. So first we have to have a answer um, variable. So let's call it answer only and the start will be zero. Let's start with two pointers. One will start from the zeroth index of the array and the second will start from the end pointer of the array array dot size minus one right now the next question is till when we have to run our loop so while i is less than j till the time when we have elements to track we will keep running this while loop so this is the condition and what we have to check is First, we have to calcul calculate the area. So int area is equal to, we have to find the minimum height of the two pointers that we are using. So array of i and array of j, we have to first find the minimum of both and then multiply it with the difference between the uh, two pointers. So it will be j minus i. Now we have to check if this area is greater than the already area, maximum area that we have. So we have to update our answer as max of answer or area, right? Now the next thing is we have to update our pointers and we will move the pointer which has lesser height. So we have to check if the height of i pointer is less than the height of j pointer then we have to move our i to plus plus or else we have to move our j to minus minus. So this is our solution. Let's see how it will perform. At the end, return our answer. Let's check if it runs or not. As you can see, the answer is accepted here. So that's it for today's video. We saw two problems, one from easy category and second one from medium. So in the next video, we will be covering more questions so that you, you will be more confident about greedy algorithms. And I hope you like this video. If yes, please like and do let me know in the comment sections. And see you all in the next video. Thank you.